This is the More Than A Walk podcast, the official African-American male wellness agency podcast. Um, what's going on, guys? How are y'all? I'm well. What up, what up, what up? Healthy. <laughs> We're here. I'm 29. <laughs> That's crazy. And I'm here. <laughs> I'm Malcolm. Um, I'm here with some of my colleagues from the agency, um, some new faces. Marlon, you haven't been on the podcast since we got the cameras and everything. Yeah, we was running in the real... Uh, What's what's the name of that movie? Uh, with uh, something on Tubi, Terrence Howard, <laughs> uh, Hustle and Flow, Hustle and Flow. Uh, yeah, we had a real <laughs> Hustle and Flow operation going on at the office. Man, uh, shout out to uh, Statehouse Studios and Rizzo for letting us come in and get a real production. That's right. Um, we was master peeing it for a while. Yeah, and, and we looking good right now. Appreciate it. And then we got Perry, absolutely the goat. Um, That's crazy. I'm back. I get to be on here every episode. I think so. I want to, to see y'all again. I want to bring back the soundboard so we can please do our sound effects and whatnot. <laughs> got a 360 deal now. You think he's a man? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's the real reason why we put you guys next to each other. You know, because you know, former wall coordinator Perry come in to replace you and everything. So yeah, um, I would call it uh, Jordan and Kobe. You know, Jordan and Kobe. That's yeah. crazy. Um, and then off camera, we do have Patrick McNeil, who's here. He's the national uh, executive director for the walk. Did I say that right? Yes, indeed. I'd be, be here. I'd be practicing y'all's titles and everything because it's just so. Thanks for having me, Malcolm. Thanks for having me in the building. Yeah. Um, this is the first episode that we are putting out post walk season actually starting we've been building up to this moment we've been talking about it all year um it is a historic year this is a um the 20th year of us walking to save black men's lives and uh you know it's, it's finally starting and whatnot we just kind of wanted to tell the people a little bit about what's going on you know so because we actually mid-season or i guess not mid-season but the season has started yeah you know what facts. I'm saying? like mm -hmm. we are in season mm -hmm. and so it seems like we're never we've talked about this internally like when is our off season? And I was telling, I was telling Malcolm like, bro, there's no off season in the work that we do. He's like, no, we gotta have some time to really just, like, bro, yeah, we gotta save lives. Like, we really like, yeah, it's, there is no days off with this. But we technically are in season right now, which means the walks have kicked off. We got a few coming up, and it's going. I, I kind of look at us. I'm not going. I mean, we're non-clinical people, so you know, people that work at hospitals, they don't have holidays off and all that. They just gotta go when they get scheduled. I wouldn't say we're that, you know, because we do have days off. I would consider us, and this is kind of Patrick's background, we're more like real estate. So, like, real estate kind of has high tides and low tides, but there's mm. never really, like, an off-season or a downtime. Mm. I'm glad you said that because I did not know where you was going. Always <laughs> working. Always <laughs> working. <laughs> Always like, working. Really you can trust me and my yeah, yeah, educators. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everybody so, else. so, that's how I look at it. I mean, in, in April really is. April is Minority Health Month. I mean, I don't know if that's coincidental, but – that really is kind of like when walk season is really like, okay, the preseason games are over, the prep is over. It's really time for us to get, you know, in full motion preparing not only for the walk, but the other activations that we have. So like our first walk of the year is down in Houston and then it's followed right behind that with Jackson. Um, do we normally start the first walks this early? <laughs> this is new. This is new. Yeah. <laughs> this is new. Um, this is new. Mm. Uh, uh, some of that came with like the pandemic and kind of like some restructuring of things, uh, moving some walks from the late summer to the spring and they kind of just stuck with that schedule. Mm. And really, cause you want to have, and, and I'm sure Perry tell you, so Perry used to be the national walk director. So Perry tell you, it takes about nine, 10 months to really have a good runway. And if you get outside of that, if you try to like cut it to like six, it's not a good thing at all. And I would just say, aside from the time, like the time of the year, I would say it's because of the where we're going now. We're in the South now, you know. So mm. we're in Mississippi, yeah. we're in Houston, <laughs> Texas. You can't do a walk in the summer or no one's That's coming. A good point. <laughs> you know yeah, I, mean? I didn't even think so about that. Yeah, you got to start to think about how. And then when you get into the fall, we have all these other walks happening already. So it's like really, we got so many walks now. We've expanded so much and grown so much. We have to be almost year round with the walk season now. And so as we look at, some people are talking to us from Dallas. Some people are calling us from some other places that's in, in these uh, warmer cities and states. Mm -hmm. And so we may be doing walks in January at some point. Who knows? Like <laughs> That's wild. Just think about it. Like, <laughs> what you say? LA's in November, and that's kind of mm -hmm. like, that was part of the strategy of going there is certain places you can have a walk 10 months out of the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Columbus, you got about three months. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Midwest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Period. Yeah, yeah. 
And that's where most of our walks started at. You know, you got five walks in Ohio, then you got Detroit, and you got all these Louisville, all these Midwest kind of um, cities. And so we have about that three month window to get about 10 walks off. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So sometimes walks are on the same day. We're walking in Cleveland and Toledo on the same day. Mm. Um, and so we make it a competition. We make it kind of friendly, but it's a lot of work for us internally. Yeah, that's Because right. we got to divide and conquer. We got to make sure we're marking them each the, the, the same or, you know, take the time for both of them. So it's kind of crazy. Now, this is our first year that we walked in Houston, but this isn't our first time that we was down in Jackson, right? No. So we did Jackson last year. For the oh, that first, was the first time last yep, year. Last year was the first last time year. we did Jackson. And so that was our first time doing a walk in the spring. We did April as well mm. uh, last year. And it worked out really well. It worked out for the city specifically. So a lot of times, you know, people think it's like us making these decisions here in Columbus or at corporate, but we have local committees that work in all of our cities. And it's all local organizations, local community leaders, uh, local corporations. And so they all come together and that work, that is what worked best for them. Mm. And so we always make sure that the committee – uh, as a consistent, a consistent, however you say that word, <laughs> they, make that, yeah. they make that decision because they know themselves. their team better than anybody exactly. else does. That makes sense. Exactly. Now, Patrick, and obviously this is your first walk season and everything, but you've been out to these different cities. You've gone to Houston. Obviously, you've been to Houston, uh, Jackson, Philly. I haven't been to Jackson yet, but I did get to Atlanta. So the three cities I, I have been able to attend have been Philly, Atlanta, uh, got to Toledo and, and Houston. Houston was amazing. Mm-hmm. They're on fire, man. I can't wait to get to that walk. Yeah, so, like, what's your experience been going out to the different cities, like, especially, you know, taking in the walk for the first time? Like, what's My your experience, thoughts? man, it's been, like, uh, people are excited, and that's the thing that's motivating me. It's like you go out to these cities in Atlanta, they got a lot of uh, momentum going. Their committee meetings uh, are live. They got plenty of people that are on board. Um, and being in Houston with them being just a week away at this point, which is crazy to think about how this time has flown, even in my little bit of time, um, Houston is ready. So they, they are definitely um, – the street team is out. They're passing out flyers. They're holding community events. Um, we just had a, you know, real men – it wasn't even – it's like a real kid real talk, real teen real talk almost um, this weekend that went really well. So um, – I've had a good experience, and I'm just looking forward to, you know, seeing this thing through throughout the different cities. So I haven't traveled as much as uh, Patrick has this year because I have, have a different role. Him and Kenny are president. But what, what it sounds like from hearing their feedback and going to these other markets, and I'm going to call this out a little bit here in Columbus, it sounds like we kind of take for granted what the agency is here in Columbus. Mm, you why know, you say we, that? I think that, you know, we, we sometimes have to – we don't understand the lack because we have so much happening, right? We have all these programs that we're doing, all these events. We're doing six different programs at once here in Columbus, right? When we go and tell people in Philadelphia or in Houston or somewhere else what we have going on, they're like, why don't we have more of that here? You know what I mean? And so for us here, I feel like we have to kind of convince people to come out sometimes and be very creative and get people to come. And they do come out. But I think that the other cities are seeing what we have here and they're kind of jealous. They're like, why don't we have more of that? Mm. And we kind of take it for granted here because we're used to it happening on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. So I think that they're, that the other cities are very much intrigued and excited about how much we can bring to those areas, what, how big that gap is, and how we, all the resources and all the tools we have are helping uh, impact that, those communities. I think it's really interesting that you guys are talking about it taking nine to ten months before the walk actually happens to really gear up the momentum and stuff for it. Uh, sometimes I'm walking around and I might have like the agency um, hoodie on or like you know the black on black healing or something along those lines, and I'm inviting them to the different things and say, uh, "Why are you doing this already? Like this February, it's March, it's April." Um, have you guys gotten that feedback saying like, "Oh, this is too early," and like, how would you like change the narrative on it? Um. So there's two sides to it. There's the there's the back of the house and there's the front of the house. Mm. Really, the nine month runway part, a lot of that is back of the house. You don't necessarily really in, in period jump in and let me know if I'm wrong. Really, your marketing marketing really starts around like six months out. I would say you're gonna probably spend the first three months getting a date, building your committee, which is very important. I know Perry talked about committees. That's also a very unique part of what we do here as an agency is we build a committee comprised of local. Uh, individuals, local organizations, like you said, so that we provide the model and then we tailor that model to the individuals in that city. Uh, and so it's a good fit. But a lot of times it's building, building a committee, finding an honorary chair. You have to have an honorary chair, an ambassador to make sure that the walk has some notoriety and credibility and it relates to that city. And then from there, it's 
you know, the infrastructure parts, the, the, the permits and all those things before you can even say, all right, now we're ready to promote and get your marketing material ready. So about 90 days of that is really just back of the house stuff so you can be prepared to market. And then I would just say the fundraising too. The yeah, fundraising, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. we get support for the community, but we have to raise the funds in yeah. order to put this event on and these programs on. So you're talking about street closures and permits and marketing and all these different A1C things. Machines. Screening, yeah. Yes. All these different things. And so you got to make sure you're able to even do the walk. You know what I mean? You yeah. got to make sure you have the support, the resources and the tools to make sure you can pull it off, so to speak. So that's the other piece that you're doing for those nine to 10 months as well. Yeah, and I think that that part gets lost. Like when we're telling people to come in and join the committee, the reason why we're saying it right now is because we are doing those things and we need help to like really be able to get this walk off the right way. Um, it's not just coming in like hearing about um, the programs that we have right now. It's really that run up time um, for the summer and all that type of stuff. Yeah, and then they're, they're, these are large events. So, you know, most events. You don't need 500 volunteers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you may need 10 or 20 volunteers, something like that. We we need four to 500 volunteers to pull these things off. Uh, we're trying to recruit passion teams to, in, in the thousands range. You know what I mean? And so to do that, it has to be a consist, consistent, consistent, consistent uh, outreach and engagement and just uh, promotion, so to speak. So you're doing all those different things as well as just tr trying to promote the event. But to Marlon's point, you really hit the promotional part heavy that six month range and then again even heavier about 90, 90 days, days out yeah. yeah um i mean so marlon you've been doing the walk for four years now this is season five i had to start addressing it that way because i started in january so this is like my fifth season in the league shout out huh. to patrick <laughs> you, you, you didn't hoop here <laughs> that's crazy um, so we'll say it like that then season five for you this is season three for you three yeah, yeah. season three for me as well right three whatever yours is mine yeah yeah because y'all both started in like july august yeah. june but it's cool yeah, nah so yeah. i guess and obviously your rookie, rookie season yes indeed. yes indeed <laughs> roy right right um I well, guess hold up. rookie season, but were you were you like a first round pick or were you lottery? That's like, a good you, question. You How would you call yourself? I will oh, say. <laughs> I, I, was lottery. Lottery. I was lottery. I was lottery. I, I went, know my guy. Yeah, I, I was I was one or two. So then you don't get no time to get acclimated in. You yeah. get thrown into yeah. the starting lineup. There yeah. are expectations. <laughs> I want to make sure you put that out there. Yeah. You, don't there, use that rookie excuse to yeah. do lottery. <laughs> there are immediate expectations my way. So. Immediate expectations. Immediate. Um, I was going to ask you guys, like, how has the, I guess, your perspective on the walk changed um like since you've been started doing it so five years for you three years for you well this is your first time but the most tenured start uh, uh my perspective on the walk and just kind of seeing everything that goes in it like you know at one point i was in my rookie season like patrick and so you know our president and founder mr gregory's been doing this this is his 20th walk so he has already like a structure and a system in place that, you know, he wants people to follow. Mm. Season one was a lot of learning that structure, almost like coming in, you know, we talking about sports, but coming in, learning a new offense, learning a new coach, learning a new system. It's a lot of head bumping. Like you have a good skill set. You know, I have good skills. Patrick has good skills. Perry has good skills. Uh, but if you're not in the system and, and learning the system and acclimating those skills to the system, it's going to be some friction. So me and Mr. Gregory had a decent amount of friction year one. Year two was more like, okay, I learned his timeliness, the way he wants things done. And then uh, that's also when the pandemic hit. So that was a little bit of an asterisk. We did things a lot different with our freedom walk. But I would say year three, it was very much, you know, kind of like a, a, a player coach. Mm. Like didn't need to check in with Mr. Gregory as much, kind of knew where everything should be from a marketing standpoint, from a fundraising standpoint, logistics, and what we are asking our committee to do at certain points of times of the year. And so season three was kind of like, I know when the church flyer should be out. I know when we're doing commercials. I know when we need to hit X amount of dollars raised. And so just the overall experience of planning the walk, as you do it more times, as you get more reps, you get better at the execution of it. Now, the level of work also has increased because of the expectation level of what we had. A couple of years ago, we had 30,000 people. This past year, we just hit 35,000 people. You can't put in the same input and expect the same output. I would say for me, it's been similar to his journey. I would just say I had an opportunity to study and watch with Mr. Gregory and with Marlon as well. Mm -hmm. So when I first started, I got to sit on a call with him, saw how he did things. I started to call Mr. Gregory. So they, they're similar, but there are their unique differences as well. Who's better? 
And I'm just going to keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> and what I would say is that I kind of pull from both of their their um, their formats or their, their ways they do things. And I would put my own spin on it as well. And so it's been a little bit easier for me, I would say, because I've had multiple people to kind of work with and watch for it uh, as I did it for the last three years. Also, I started off doing other cities and now I'm going to Columbus, whereas Marlon started off in Columbus and he's now doing the other cities now. Yeah. And so we have, we, we kind of went this way, if that makes sense. But I think that it is, um, it's easy. Like it's easier the more you do it. When you first start, it's difficult. You know, you're like, well, we last year we did like this. Well, you're not trying to do the same thing you did last year. You're trying to do better than this year. So it's like, how do you increase something that's already great? You know what I'm saying? Or how do you try to find unique and creative ways to make this thing separate and, and make it better and stand out differently from the, the year before? And so it's just a learn. It's still you're learning all the time, but it does get a little easier. Um, it becomes wash, rinse, repeat in some in some respects, but it's also you want to stay creative, stay innovative, and stay ahead of the times because you want to make sure you're getting new people to come out, and then also keep your same audience that you've already had from previous years coming out as well. So, I think the thing that I am most um, excited about really has nothing to do with the walk itself. Um, it's seeing not just the expansion into other cities and walking in other cities, but the programming that's following. Um, because we said that the walk is always kind of like just the the preliminary thing is the faces to carry to get people to come out to get their free health screenings and whatnot but truly anywhere that we have a walk at we also want to have an agency there too that does the year-round programming so seeing that we're doing real men real talks in los angeles and in houston and in jackson and all these other cities i'm um, seeing or hearing that people want to bring you know the proud dad cookout and the cooking with dads to their cities like that's really exciting to me um, because you know the agency it is all about saving black men's lives uh, holistically and really you know catering to all the needs of black men across the country I, I think kind of looking at the walk it's it's I explain it to people is like the walk is the gateway to entry mm. into a new market it's our Super Bowl mm -hmm. so it's gonna be the most visible it's gonna be the thing that gets the most media coverage it's gonna be all that but when you're talking about things like wellness it's not a one-day thing and so really it requires more of an intimate hands-on approach getting people to really change their lifestyle is not something you're going to convince them to do in one day particularly if they don't have the resources but you can draw attention to the fact that they do need to change their lifestyle through an event like the walk through an event that's not us just sitting in a conference room and saying oh you're you know your blood sugar's high what's this but bringing them out to something that's family oriented that's free and something that's going to draw their attention once they get their health screenings and say, OK, I need to address X, Y, A, B and C. Now the agency is putting additional programming and supports in place throughout the year to be able to help them uh, uh, improve their overall health and wellness. So that that part for me does get exciting because it's a growth mm -hmm. stage. Yeah. And, you know, perspective is is amazing. Um we keep on saying that this is a history year, a historic year for us um, because it's our 20th year. Um, but to you guys' point, sitting and talking to Mr. Gregory, you just get a lot of knowledge and stuff from him. And the way that he put it one day for me, it really, really resonated. He said, you know, the first walk, and we've all heard the story, right? The first walk that we did, he was just trying to raise awareness about the fact that uh, black people were dying. They did uh, five miles instead of five kilometers because he didn't know how to do the walk the right way. And, um, after it was done, he said, all right, that was cool. It's done and we don't have to do it no more. But people kept on asking it. All right, no, we need to do this. We need to do this. We need to do this. And um, it turned into an annual walk. And then from the annual walk, he started doing the screenings there. And then from there, the agency being created. And so you start out with just 700 people just walking to raise awareness to now giving out over 50,000 health screenings across the country. Like, that's amazing, you know? Yeah, I would say... I don't know if y'all are familiar with the movie or not, but it's a movie. Wait, uh, did I say it the right way, Perry? <laughs> you know, you just no, killing you me really. All right, cool, cool, cool. But uh, I think the movie, I think it was on Holes. The, the movie Holes, ever seen the movie Holes? Yeah. Where the guy was like, he was like, I can fix that. I can fix yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, facts. Like, that's what it seems like our, our agency is. It's mm. like every time a, a problem comes up, you know, it's like the agency can fix that. Like Mr. Greg's like, we can fix that, we can fix that. And that's where you get the National Center for Urban Solutions. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He said, he said he was tired of going to meetings and everyone talking about problems, you know, like who's talking about the solutions. And so when they talk about black men dying, he's like, I can fix that. Or they talking about mental health or they talking about fatherhood, whatever. Well, we can fix that. So that's how it kind of feels is that we jump out in any kind of issue. And it's really how the agency was formed. You know, when they talk about all these social determinants of health, 
It's like, okay, well, we got a program for that. We got a program for that. We got a program for that. So now we're fixing all these other things. Now we can talk about going to the doctor, knowing your numbers, things like that. So It takes a lot of audacity, you know, and I think that that's probably the right word for it. Um, but it's exciting because it's actually paying off. It's not just, oh, we're going to do this. Like, you actually see the results and stuff from and it. And now we're super experienced in it. Because I think at first what he would say was that he would say he could fix stuff, and he didn't even know how he was going to get to that answer, right. that yeah, solution. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to figure it out on the way. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But now it's like we have this expertise, this wide range of staff, this, you know, all these different uh, things that we have strengths at. And so now we really are the answer for everything when it comes to black men's solutions, when it comes to health and wellness. Overall, I, and we kind of talked about this um, before the cameras kind of turned on. You know, we really are a one stop shop. We provide all of our own real wraparound services. Like I said, we're not clinical in any way, um, but the methodology behind it, what we do well, is community engagement. Yeah. Like just understanding the fact that black people have been under engaged and underserved, and that it takes somebody who looks like us to understand how to navigate our world to understand where we're gonna be, to understand the things that we're going through, to understand the best way to engage us because there is a lot of distrust. And so really that going door to door, that going to the barbershop, that going to the beauty salon, imagine if you saw your doctor show up in your barbershop, that would automatically kind of change your dynamic or your viewpoint of your yeah. doctor. Like, oh shoot, you go here too? Or <laughs> it's it, like when you're a kid, you see a teacher. Yeah, yeah. At, the yeah. at the grocery oh, store. Oh, <laughs> you're a real person. You got a life outside of here. <laughs> your first name is Jenny, not just, yeah. just Andrew. Yo, yeah. finding out that your teacher has a first name is wild. Yo, <laughs> crazy wild. Yeah. Like, even as you get never mind. Um, <laughs> but just this looking awesome at those place. dynamics in 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 being able to relate to black people, it makes again, a very intimate and sensitive topic such as health be more digestible. Yeah. You know, if I see you out in my barbershop or I see you at my church or I see you at my kid's basketball game or I see you in somewhere other than the space that I put you in in my head, it makes me relate to you on a different level. And I say this all the time on different podcasts. Uh, I'm going to charge you a booking fee for this, but that's crazy. people bond over commonalities. Like that's one of the, I forgot where I got that from, but people bond over commonalities, where you're from, you know, how old you are, uh, college that we went to, Perry went to a D2, <laughs> we went to a D3, it's cool. Uh, fraternities, sororities, all these different things are things that help interconnect people in ways that we don't always associate, but it helps to make, again, these sensitive conversations, these sensitive topics, and it allows us to be more open to having them and trusting people with this information that they're using to help us. And so being out in the community, whether it's for workforce, for education, for tech, for you know the contracts that we have for outreach, what we do is really, really unique to us. And I thought that other people did that until I got here and I was like, oh, people really don't go door yeah. to door. People aren't going to grocery stores. People aren't going to churches. I'm a retired club promoter. So going outside at 2 a.m. outside the club and handing out flyers was like, what, everybody not doing this? So when I got here, and people are like, oh, can you go door to door for us? I'm like, I was going door to door making no money. I'm definitely <laughs> exactly. going to go door to door, <laughs> you know, exactly. for a contract or to help do something like save people's lives. Right. Mm -hmm. So it just changes the whole uh, dynamic of the store when we say we're really doing this from a place of something that we know and something that we love. I think that was well said. It's a mic drop right there. Right. <laughs> you <laughs> put that out. Um, you said cut it out. I said clip, clip that. Clip oh, that. Yeah, not facts. Um, well, you know, we're running a little short on time. Um, I think that that was perfect. This episode is supposed to go out just to tell people that, you know, walk season has started um, across the country. We are walking to save black men's lives. Um, you can be a part of that. You can join uh, the committee. You can sign up to do outreach with us. You can help us with our marketing. You can arrange a passion team. Um, you know, you could really be part of history because this year in Columbus, we're trying to get 50,000 people to walk with us uh, to really commemorate our 20th year. Um, and we're trying to kick off these walks and have the same impact in all of our cities that we have here in Columbus. So um, does anybody have any final words that they want to say before we get out of here? I would just say to get involved is aawellness.org. You mm -hmm. probably see it in the caption or comments or something like yeah. that. But Drop a link yeah. when y'all post this video. Mm -hmm. I know y'all have the editing the video uh, yeah. ability. Shout out to Rizzo back here. But yeah, aawellness.org. Best thing you can do is get involved any way, shape, or form. Sponsor, volunteer, join a committee. It's a very light lift, but if we do it together, you know what I'm saying, everybody can be impactful. I'm so glad you said that. I can't believe that I forgot it. New this year, new this year, we do have Facebook groups. 
for every city that we're in. Oh, that's live, yeah. We yeah, do. so um, go to our Facebook page, AA Wellness Agency, and um, you can join the group for your city, and then you'll just see information that's relevant to you and your city. Um, so you'll know when the Real Man Real Talks are, you'll know when we have the Cooking with Dads, if we have any other type of programming or whatnot. So um, make sure that you guys do that. All right, well, we're out.